thanks <laughs> thanks for giving me a time i appreciate it oh welcome do you have uh did you say you had like was a crossfit or something just before this you said oh no <laughs> pilates sorry pilates class yeah, uh, you... i don't normally work on a sunday but um one of the instructors uh is not well covid mm. stuff so yeah yeah <laughs> Got a call up, can you please come and help? And I was like, Yeah, I'll come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. So do you normally take Pilates or you you do Pilates more? Than I, I do teach Pilates yeah. classes. Yeah. But Sunday is my day off. I yeah, mean, yeah, the rest day. Yeah. You gotta help yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. How's um how's like training and all that going? Um, I'm really only just getting back into it again. Um, yeah. but pretty much this week started back up into kind of like training camp mode. So back into two a day. Um, yeah, feeling all right. Uh, a bit of a disappointing end to last year because I still now haven't fought for February. We'll make two years and I haven't wow. competed. Is that, so, um, uh, is that just lack of fights or is just not being able to get something or? Honestly, it's been mostly been all COVID related stuff. Okay. So my, yeah last fight was back in february 2020 which was my like olympic qualifiers yeah which i i lost my bout in then but um we had a second tournament to be able to qualify for the olympics which was set for may um over in paris and my final olympic qualifier was cancelled with covid related stuff um so i didn't get a chance to try and make my the Olympic team for that and they just did it on like a ranking point system and I missed out by one place uh, um, to get that. Yeah. And we went into our big COVID stuff there when we went into all our lockdown. Um, then I got um, an injury. I broke my thumb and I couldn't box for a bit. And then um, finally at the end of this year, I got the chance to head overseas and go to the world championships. Um, so I did a training block over in the UK. Um, and as soon as we had, we had a four week training block planned and we arrived, we'd only been there for two days and IABA, so like the international governing body, um, just sends an email out and says, we apologize for any inconvenience, but we are rescheduling the world championships to next year. Yeah, while, like, you, while you're already in, you um, <laughs> uh, we just spent thousands of dollars and yeah. had paid for an entire training camp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're super devastated with that. Um, yeah. We're training with the um, UK national squad over there in Sheffield. So they were pretty gutted as well because they'd been in their training camp. So we looked around together to try to find another international tournament to at least do something because you don't mm. want to do a five-week training camp like and push yourself and then to what? Go home. Yeah, for have no, yeah nothing's like, actually you put it towards. You yeah. need a goal there to like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to drive myself. So pretty cool we found a tournament that was over in spain um so they um booked in for it so did we and then <laughs> of course drama happens again training camp went amazingly feeling top of the world two days before we to fly out to spain we get the stock standard pcr test so you can travel and the results come back and four of the six of the Australian team All tested are positive. positive. Oh, shit. Oh. You must not fly yeah. in your hotel room and quarantine. So that's, that, that sealed yeah. that one. That's so a good thing really about even Europe though, right? Like you just you could just pack and go to Spain or where, <laughs> wherever you want. Oh. If, you, if you're stuck here, like where are you going to go? The closest is probably Asia. And then, yeah, that's about it really. Everything else is just 24 hours away. Or, so uh, far away. Yeah. Oh. So, so have you had, um? because you've had professional fight bouts as well, right? Is that right? No. Okay. So no. Was, the, the ruling has allowed now for... Yeah. Um, the, the switch back and forth between the pros and the amateurs. I haven't been able to adopt that yet, firstly, because I just really haven't had the opportunity to be able to fight. New South Wales really has only towards the end of um, last year. Last had year that, that, that opened up. I was overseas. Um, they had quite a few up in Queensland, but then we had the border lockdowns. But New South Wales combat sports um, makes it very difficult for our state to change between the two. We're the only state they have got these regulations and legislation that Boxing New South Wales is trying to adjust because uh, it potentially means that I might not be able to try for 
Commonwealth Games and yeah, stuff so it's like because that. of that. It's because of the Com Games yeah. wanting to try all of like, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I don't want to. I want to make one more Commonwealth Games. Um, so I'm just not exploring that um, pro side of things until kind of the end of Commonwealth Games, so which is July August this year. Okay, and you've been in the Com Games before as well, right? I have. This will be yeah. my third one. Third if I one, can yeah. That then. Yeah, so yeah. So I was yeah. in the, the first ever for the females. So that was back yeah. in 2014. The first time the girls were included. Yeah. And then up in Gold Coast, and then hoping to make this one my third one in Birmingham. Oh, that'll be nice. Something different. Yeah. Back um, to the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, no emails. Uh, sudden emails. Oh, being sent yeah. Better not be. Yeah, I think, I think they're over it anyway. They've because I got I got my first cousin that lives in London, and she's just like, man, they just you know everyone's just doing whatever now. Like, oh, you know, yeah, they didn't they care just, at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like crying to begin yeah. with, going, I'm not going to be able to get food. I don't know yeah. anyone here. What am I going to do? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. Like, yeah, I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. What took you down this path? Like, uh, what 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 kind of took you down wanting to, um, you know, kind of train for for the Commonwealth Games and yeah, kind of represent Australia in that that level in terms of boxing? I don't have anyone in my like family boxing isn't in the blood, the family or anything mm. like that. But I just kind of fell into it. I started doing some like boxer size type fitness stuff just when I started. Um, at university um just as kind of like a side thing to stay fit and one of the instructors at the gym was actually a boxer and a boxing coach himself mm, mm. he used to take like the box boxer boxer size class yeah, and then yeah, also yeah. do a boxing class with some boys afterwards and after i'd been doing it for about six months he was like oh like you hit the pads pretty well i'd love it if you hung back with the guys and like started to learn some stuff i was like no i don't think so <laughs> But he, he kept pressure, pressuring me for a while and I decided to hang back one time and do the class and, like, from there I just I fell in love with it. I loved it. Mm. So um, from there I just kind of signed up at my local PCYC and it just evolved from there. But when I first wanted to fight, because it was way back, again, New South Wales behind the times, um, it was illegal for me to have a fight. Mm. So I started training up at the gym and like I went to a few of the other boys fight nights and I was like, this is really cool. And I kind of said to my coach, I was like, oh, do you reckon like if I keep training, like you think I can have a fight? Mm. And he kind of was like, oh, probably not. And I was like, oh, oh what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, oh, unless you want to like fly up to Queensland or you, I guess we could travel down to Canberra. And I'm like, what do you mean? Why, why wouldn't I just have a fight here? he goes, do you not notice that there's no girls on these fight nights? And I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, it's still illegal. That's so um, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah. Like, I was like, what? Combat, combat sports in New South Wales, eh? Learn, <laughs> learn, learn as we go type of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I actually was the first legalized female. Um, That's bout crazy. In New South Wales. So yeah, it was really, yeah. really cool. How did um, um was that? Was that just due to like at that time the legislation changed and or was there like a bit of a push from from women in general that wanted to compete and say, hey, like, you know, we yeah, want to get in there and yeah. The um, Olympics then allowed for 2012 for females to be entered and then pretty much the New South Wales had to change their legislation because every other state could trial yeah. for the Olympics yeah. and we had to align our laws with that. So um, there was a fair bit of pressure and then they adjusted that and then I was the first one with my hand up going, yep, yeah. and me, <laughs> I want to fight. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Um, so in terms of Commonwealth Games, was uh, wh wh what else kind of along that realm have you been able to kind of Get yourself involved in it was just the comm games is olympics as well at all did you trial out for olympics and things I, like that or? i haven't been able yeah. to make the yeah. olympics is that elusive goal that i want to make and yeah, then yeah it was it was very heart-wrenching in 2020 to have my final qualifiers like taken away from me yeah. it was like half of the australian team like if you didn't win in that first trials that we had it was like okay you've got the world trials and you'll be able to get okay that's where there. COVID and all that came and the, yeah the messed hand. it up yeah 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 so, um yeah I was thought yeah. that it was really gonna be my year yeah. 
yeah, it just hasn't happened, unfortunately. Yeah. What's um? So is that kind of what's what's the routine like for you when when it does come to training and boxing? Um, I always see you pop up in code. Like Cody's a good man. I, I used to train with Cody uh, back. Yeah, yeah, Bulldogs. I know. Yes, yeah, so I saw you pop up on the video <laughs> yesterday as well. Yeah. Um, so like, what's what's uh, what's like a typical kind of routine during the week for you with 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 boxing and stuff? Is it is it you mainly focusing on that during the week, or is it a mix of things? Or no, nah, it's definitely a mix of yeah. things. Mm. I like I still work full time, um, yeah. so it's kind of fitting it in there. And I usually just generally do two sessions a day. Yeah. Um, if I have a third one, it's usually just an extra, like a Pilates or yoga or a little bit of rehab type stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll pretty much almost always have a boxing session each day. And then the other session will either be a strength session um, or a conditioning session, which will either be my like road running type stuff or using a, a different apparatus there, like roll or ski or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. or a conditioning session to work through. So kind of mixes up there and then the boxing session is obviously it, it varies during the week i've got sparring days i've got bad work days we've got partner work drills yeah. and um switches there must be um i mean you've got to be pretty motivated to kind of be let down a few times and still kind of you know still be like you know kind of relentless in wanting to kind of tick off some of those goals right um oh, what, what what what's what's kind of kept you on that path like what's kind of not made you want to pull the plug on it and be like, you know, kind of not so much given up, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, oh, it's not easy, right? Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I think just the sport itself and being in it at such a high level for a long time, it really builds up that resilience. Um, and if you want something bad enough, if that's your dream and what you really, really want, it doesn't matter how many obstacles pop up in front of you you just got to find a way. So it doesn't mean that I don't get upset and disappointed when all those like hurdles come through. Like, well, I definitely, I cried when <laughs> my results came through. I was like, no, yeah. I want to go to Spain. Yeah. What the hell? This is so unfair. Yeah. Like you can, you, you accept those emotions. They're normal to have, but you can't sit and wallow in them for on them. Yeah. three weeks, yeah. four weeks, five weeks. I was like, all right, give yourself a day or two. And now, okay, like, sort something out and I was like no I'm gonna keep training in the hotel I'm gonna do what I can here so I can at least stay active I'm not gonna be building and getting better but I can at least maintain what I've done here yeah um you just find those goals and I just put steps in place to achieve them yeah what was um especially like once you started kind of you know getting into it early on like you said um what was kind of the was it just purely was it just purely being able to do a couple of those kind of classes and, and get a feel for it that kind of dove you in completely into it? Was it, was there kind of any other element that kind of made you kind of fall in love with, love with the sport and wanting to kind of represent it at a high level? Um, or was it just purely um, you did something that kind of, you know, you, you were just drawn to it. Cause there's that other element that I want to ask about, which is obviously there's the hitting pads and then you get into that sparring, right. Which, you know, and then that, <laughs> that opens your yeah. fucking mind like a whole nother level. You're like, okay, yeah. now, now, uh, like now I must really want to do this because it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Once you start sparring and, you know, especially start oh. sparring high level people, um, you know, you, you start to think, you know, okay, I've got to really want to do this in order to kind of, you know, go through this process week in, week out. Right. Um, what kind of, because, it's, it's easy, like, it's easy to say, I like it. And, you know, many people say that, right. And then you kind of, you know, like for yourself, who has been doing it for so long and obviously, you know, haven't always got the results you, you wanted. And then it's like, okay, it's almost like it's a minor setback, but at the same time, mentally, you got to be really strong to kind of pick yourself up, you know, and that's anybody, right. Any, anyone that's an athlete or, you know, kind of in a, in a result driven kind of environment, um, you know, it's easy to kind of wallow in yourself, but I feel like, like liking something can only take you so far. And then it's like, you got to kind of have something that really just 
wakes you up on the on the shitty days where you know you got a, oh, a, yeah. a sore back or a you know like I've had a few amateur fights so I know just from that like I know like you got to be motivated you know and I've been lucky enough to be around some cool but like I said Cody I've been able to train with Cody and those guys so you know to get up and do it every day um that's a different motivation in itself right um so, you know, was there any other elements that really kind of drove you into it? Um, I know that representing Australia is probably the top of it and that's probably what's driving yeah. you the most, right? So, It is. Having those yeah. ambitions and, uh, and goals and once you've kind of been there at that level and you've had a taste of it, you're like... Yeah. Because growing up in my career, like, firstly, it was just really exciting to go to the World Championships and it was just exciting to get the track suit and go there. But probably if I look back on it in hindsight, I didn't really actually think I could win it and then next time it's kind of like okay let's see if I can make the the top 16 and then that can happen and then in 2016 I was like first female in like actually since forever to actually get a like a silver I got a medal at the Mm, world champion mm. you just keep pushing those boundaries and you're like it becomes more tangible and realistic to be able to actually achieve more um but then there's something else I, I can't explain what it is. I'm, I just must have really fallen in love with the sport itself because there's no reason why you would keep coming back and getting punched in the face. Yeah, and like, that, yeah. I can't explain it. Like yeah. I just, it's, it's boxing. And I think the majority of most combat sports, it is takes so much time to become proficient at mm. it. Um, And I like that challenge that you're constantly learning, constantly evolving, and you can never be, like, too good. You get humbled very quickly. Like, I can be at the top of the game, yet I can get in and spar one of the other boys and I can feel like a beginner again. Mm. And I love having to adapt and use that problem-solving type mind every time because you come in with, like, someone with a different style and go, oh, okay, what I'm normally doing is not working. I've got to try Mm. something else. I've got Mm. to problem solve and do this that's what keeps it such a dynamic and exciting sport and you're just constantly learning so i I think that part of it really i was um, was gonna say that that's probably what it is you never stop learning right it's uh like like you said it's just like a complex problem each person is a different shape size and a a different you know it brings something different to to the table and and i think like like I, i still i still train to this day and 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 the one thing i tell people is like if you just like you get to that point where like you said box size right and you, you get the fitness yeah. aspect of it and enjoy it but i think you you never truly understand it till you kind of dive into the layers of like you know like why you do what you do and 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 how you're doing it and 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 then solving the problems and and then understanding the mechanics and the science behind it and and when i feel like when you start diving into the philosophies of it it becomes really addictive because like you said you you mm-hmm. never get you never get you're, you're never great at it, um, but you're always you're always coming each day and each week trying to get better. Like, like that's why I tell some people, like anyone can throw a jab and a cross, but try doing that every day for six days a week, for months on in, for years on in, for years on in, and uh-huh. and you realize you realize that uh, it's a whole different game, you know, and you start to learn the kind of the the science behind it. Um, because for someone like yourself, like 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 that's there has to be something a little bit more deeper than just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, going yeah. in and having fun and, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of like a mix of everything, right? Like it's a mix of all those different motivations. Like you said, having those goals and something that's going to get you out of bed and be like, Hey, like I got to get to work today kind of thing, you know, like, um, and, and I just I feel think like you get it right on the head there. Yeah. Like that's exactly what it is. Like it's yeah. so exciting and a constant change and learning and problem yeah. solving. That's probably the biggest part yeah. of it as a sport. And I think it's just that even with just with, like you're saying, with sparring different people, like I remember the, like the one of the things that used to get to me the most was you get through a sparring session. If you had a really shit session, which happens most of the times, because you're yeah. kind of the time when you, yeah you pretty much depending on what session it is, you pretty much got to wait till the next session to be able to rectify or to be able to, um, to, you know, like be like, man, I gotta, I gotta correct this shit. And then you just, it's in your head though. It's in your head for days. till the Yeah. Yeah. Such an emotional roller coaster. You feel on top of the world. And then the next session, you're just like, 
swing. You yeah. can't even throw a jab. How long yeah. have you been boxing for? Why can't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, and I think that's yeah. Like you said, you you hit it. You hit it perfectly when you said like it's that you're never perfect. You're always learning. You know, and um, um, what's um, I, I noticed that you you sponsored by Adidas. Is that right? Yeah, they've been um, right. looking after me for a while. I, I love their their gear and it's nice to have some support, support from companies yeah. along the way to make it just that little bit easier because it's not hard. It, it is, sorry, <laughs> it is very yeah. hard, yeah. especially like in Australia. We've got up against other girls um, that like the Great Britain team, their national squad, they're all just full-time athletes. They're mm. on a wage. I think they said it was equal to a Australian about a thousand dollars a week wow. that they get paid plus their sponsors and they're in camp from Monday to Thursday and they go home from Thursday so, night to Sunday yeah. and they like they still train with their home coaches but like they don't have to carry like a full time yeah. jobs or anything like that so um, yeah it's tricky guess- to, to hold up against them but it gives you even more yeah motivation you you must be loving it to 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 do what you do mm. i mean do you do you see do you see something like that in the future for for us here um for for our national teams and even women's national teams in terms oh, of in I... terms of being able to kind of you know kind of dive like being a, it kind of being the full time thing you know where day in day out you're kind of training and and uh being being looked up. I would love to say yeah. um I probably don't think in my um time frame while I'm yeah. still competing um yeah but I've definitely seen huge progress from when I first started and was in the national team as to now and like I still feel really blessed like this trip because I'm I'm categorized athlete like the trip itself was paid for so we don't get a, a wage or anything like that but the the food and the accommodation after flights are all looked after yeah. and that didn't used to happen like I used to fundraise and send Cadbury boxes of chocolates <laughs> yeah, to all my yeah. friends I'm like please help me sell them because I made my spot in the national team but I can't even go to the world championships because yeah. I've got to pay for it all myself so I have seen huge progress and I hope we keep moving in that forward direction yeah. so um so I think that's where things there. like sponsors and all that come into place right I think the more more like Definitely. sponsors and yeah people kind of invest yeah, just invest make it in that it. little bit yeah to try to take the load off you so maybe you can work a few less hours you can get a little bit more training time in or even just a little bit more recovery time in mm. yeah what has it been like for yourself now that you said kind of you were you know, the one of the first if not the first woman to kind of you know legally fight <laughs> in uh, new south wales right um what 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 has it been like for yourself to kind of watch that kind of grow out and um, even just see like multiple women that, like you know now fighting internationally and um, you know um, you know signing to big promotions and 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 kind of and not even that like you're seeing you're seeing kind of um, you know I don't know so much about Australia I mean maybe in local shows and things like that but even just like main events and you know kind of the main fights of the nights and. It's kind yeah, of really, it's really grown up. Yeah, yeah, big headline. Fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, take it away from just local fights in general. If you look at the the, the biggest biggest promotions, whether it's MMA, etc., a lot of big fights. Uh, you know, um, you know, are women battling it out for the for for uh, for championship belts and stuff like that. I mean, you, you only got to look at the, even just the UFC. A lot of the headlining has been. Um, you know, um, women, women headlining it. Um, and obviously, you know, there's, contra- you know, there's always controversy behind that. Right. Cause some people still kind of, you know, got their heads. Yeah. Heads, yeah, yeah, yeah a little, mentality. yeah. Old school mentality. Right. Yeah. Um, you're too pretty to box. You should yeah. Be boxing. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I even told some people, I'm like, man, you'd be surprised. I'm like, I could name you like with my, with my one hand, how many people like even just in women in general, you'd be surprised will go in there and give guys a tough, tough time in there. You know, I'm like, uh, oh, yeah. you, you know, oh, you shut know. Up. I could yeah. belt you. Yeah. So. <laughs> so what, what has it been like for you to be able to see that kind of growth, uh, especially in Australia as well, we're starting to kind of really see people come out of their shell and, um, um, and even a lot of women in MMA and in boxing here are starting to kind of, you know, start to kind of get their names out and starting to kind of get rec- recognized by bigger promotions as well internationally. I mean, Eddie Hearns, you know, got his eyes set 
in Australia as well, yeah, right? Signing Sky people left, right, and center. Yeah, Sky side. So, yeah, yeah, Sky everything's and, already yeah. there. Yeah. Um, kind of what's your thoughts it's, on that? To be honest, yeah. it's just really exciting and it's pretty inspiring to be able to see these changes. Mm-hmm. And I hope we can just keep keep that momentum going. And uh, I'm a big advocate of women and empowerment and each just equal rights to be able to do stuff. Like if you have your daughter and they wake up and they want to become a professional boxer or anything, you'd hate to be able to say, oh, you can't do that. Mm. Like you, you want everyone to have that equal opportunity and it seems as though it is starting to even out now and mm. I, I love that the majority of the public are recognising the hard work that we put into it there's like mm. no difference between like especially in the amateurs like we fight exactly the same as mm. the men it's three mm. three minute rounds we train alongside the boys we do the same runs as them we do the it, it's no different mm. um so it just it's super inspiring to see that uh, the changes and the progress that we're making mm. because i had a chat i love with- seeing those girls succeed yeah. like, well, i'm like such a champion of like pushing up those girls like mm. there's room for everyone to succeed and you should be um yeah congratulating them when they make mm. those because uh, yeah because um i had arlene arlene on uh not long oh. ago yeah and she's someone that really stands out to me as well when it comes to someone who's like a pioneer like yourself as well like that have been doing it for so long um i feel like i feel like in the mma world and maybe even you know in, within bellator and a few others like they know who she is but like i told her on the podcast i was like man like like you should be spoken about like when it's all said and done, like regardless, like you fought the best of the best you've been in there with cyborg is ultimately one of the greatest champ- women's champion in the world. And chances are probably will be in there with her again, the way that she's yeah. been, you know, she's been going about her business of late. So, um, you know, I said like, and then with her obviously being a mom and stuff, like that was something that I really wanted to speak about as well. Cause with women, like a lot of the the hurdles, one of them is how do you balance being a parent and how do you, you know, and all of that. And, and one of the crazy stories that she said was like how she would just do, uh, she would do her sprints early morning with the baby monitor. Like, like I got an eight, eight week year old and, and I can't imagine, you know, I can't imagine her doing that in the morning just like you know (laughs) and with a baby monitor outside in the front of the house but it was it was really inspiring because for me like I'm a big advocate of it and I know that like I got my you know sister-in-law stuff like that that I train with and I love I love them doing it because I know what it did for me and and I can see what it would do for others and I don't think you should categorize oh it's only for men or it's only for women because end of the day it's not about that it's what it does for you and what it does for you is different amongst everybody right like it doesn't matter whether you're all walks of life it can help from people that have are trying to turn their life around from drugs and jail and all that kind of stuff but it can also help people that are fighting their own like inner demons they might be in a wealthy upper class thing but they've still got lots of issues yeah. and it's it's giving them in the right direction mm. um male female young old like it's, it's irrelevant such yeah. An amazing yeah. and it builds like amazing friendships and relationships and arlene is one of those girls yeah. like we still spar with each other yeah and, yeah like, i've been mates since like we started fighting each other back in 2009 or 2010. Yeah, yeah cuz you guys are both like vets man. You guys have been in the game for yeah. a long time. Yeah. I like, yeah. remember one of our fights she had um her two kids with her and like we'd fought and stuff like that and I remember her, her daughter like came up and like hit me on the side I like, like cuz I'd made her mom's nose bleed and she was like I don't like you. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> now the kids are all like grown up now it's so like kind of cool seeing that yeah. progression and like she deserves so much more props yeah than, yeah like, that's i mean that's what i told her out yeah there out more. There. like yeah she's, like amazing it's just come from literally like hard work yeah and she's had to balance so many different roles being the mom still having yeah. a job all that kind of stuff yeah but it just shows like if you want something, you mm. make it work. Mm. And it's so good to see that she's starting to be rewarded from it. So, yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. 
because I like that. I like that if you really want something, I mean, that's kind of the message all across the board regardless, but also what really like, like, the, the the like the culture that the culture I come from and like many migrant families is like women have traditional roles right that's how we grew up with like my parents and my ancestors and whatnot I feel like I feel like that's changed a lot with my generation right like with with like and, and um uh, also with women as well in general like they're kind of yeah. branching out and doing different things and and you know there's that I feel like there's that um this invisible hurdle, this kind of like thing that blocks them from being able to kind of break open and go into that uncomfortable zone because of all these kind of preconceived, yeah, preconceived ideas and restrictions that society has put on and saying, Hey, you can't do that because you got to do this or this or this or this. But then once you kind of break out of that shell, you can, you realize you can balance realize. all of the, yeah, you can ba- balance all these things and as well as do what you really want to do as well. It's just a matter of, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, whether you have a partner or finding yeah, that balance. Yeah, that yeah, balance, right? And 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 it just and not was, letting those mindsets and yeah. preconceived ideas yeah. stop you in your tracks. Yeah. Like yeah. you're the master of your fate. And if you want it, you'll you'll make those adjustments and find that small balance to be able to make it work. Yeah. So, but yeah, like I, f- I found that I found it very interesting, and yeah, like I said, talking to her as well as many others, I found it very interesting. Each each of their own have their way of you know finding that motivation and being able to balance everything. But when it comes to motivation, when it comes to kind of inspiration and things like that to kind of keep you you know kind of keep you going in your tracks, um, is there anything special that you draw inspiration or motivation from, like outside of outside of just uh boxing and training you know is there things that kind of keep you um keep you straight and narrow in in what you're trying to achieve like I know a lot of people draw inspirations from other people or athletes or you know things that they do is there anything that that you kind of kind of you know kind of draw draw your inspiration and motivation from outside of just boxing to keep you keep you going like whether it's mentally or spiritually or such yeah. uh like healthy lifestyle now like ever since I was little I like I love sport I love being healthy and it's just like kind of like a way of mm. life now I just mm. don't see any other option like even when I wake, go away on my holidays like my mm. ideal holiday is to still go out get out and do a run along the beach and mm. like it doesn't have to be a program thing it's just life like yeah, you I definitely look like an outdoor stuff. person as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I wanted, like I don't want to like lay in bed all day. Like yeah. I'd love to go like on a hike somewhere and then go for a swim in the beach. Like I yeah. just find that much more enjoyable. And then yeah. in regards to training, like that extra fire is just I don't like losing. Mm. It feels shit. Mm. Like I want to win. I want to mm. be a winner. <laughs> yeah. And like that, like drives in your head. Like I don't want to lose. I don't want to do all this work to lose. And yeah. Just having that like winning and champion mindset, like I'm not doing all this work to go in there and lose. Yeah. I'm, I'm a winner. And you just, I don't know, it's it's a very potent, strong force when you think about that mm. in your head. And that's mm. why it's really good to have a goal or something set um, to work towards. So kind of maybe went off track a little bit with injuries and not being able to compete because I'm like, staying active and staying working and just in that general camp but I'm like am I gonna like actually have a competition soon like is there something mm. that I can put in the line to be okay in October you're doing this like rather than just going on and on and on mm. nothing there so I think mm. with anyone whether it's competing or something or whether it's just to run a 5k event or something it's nice to have an actual goal in place so you can mm. work towards it mm. makes it so okay. much more easier doesn't it when you have something that yeah. actually yeah yeah Definitely. so when what? you are tired or you're cold you yeah a little, no like i want to be able to run that within 25 minutes yeah. or whatever like, yeah know, keep, yeah keeps you on track a little bit easier. i um i i threw myself like obviously like i've been like I'm 34 now. So I've been training since like 22, 23. I did Muay Thai and then I've kind of been doing boxing for the last three, four years now. So it's almost like close to 10 years. I've just been in and out of the gym training and stuff. But 
Um, I threw myself into a triathlon down in South in end of Feb. Um, so I've been, oh, wow. yeah, so I've been training for that since October. And it's just something you said, like setting goals, but then also like when you're fucked up, it's like, you need to know why you're doing it. And, and yeah. And so like, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm like, I have to like been training for like a 20 K ride, a 750 meter swim. Like I love the pools. Like me and my brother, when we grew up back at home, like we grew up around the water and stuff. So like, this has kind of forced me to fall in love with the water again. Cause I remember yeah. how much I love swimming and stuff. So, so now it's like, I have no choice. I have to like, I'm not going to go buckle. Like the last thing I want to do is like, go and just you know kind of like I say like you know I don't want a participation award I actually want to go give it a good good go kind of thing you know what I mean yeah give it a crack so it's like falling in love with the water again it made me remember like how much I loved you know swimming and just being in the water and things like that but um you know I've yeah I haven't cycled since I was a kid pretty much you know what I mean so now like I've got a road bike I've been riding so you know like every time yeah I'm knackered like you got the lycra you got the lycra on and you're out there yeah yeah so I just got it I literally I literally just got it yesterday I never thought I told my wife I said can you feel me because I want to know I swear to god I look I probably look like a dickhead but I just want to I just want to see what I look like wearing it and riding riding around so she's like next time you finish up and you come in and drop the bike she because I'll come out and take a film just to see what you look like. Because I'm like, uh, I'm like, I never thought in a million years I would, I would be wearing it, you know. Um, but I went all in. I was like, just throw myself in the deep end. I wanted to do something that, you know, like I love testing myself mentally, and that's what I love. This is what the podcast Into the Deeps about. Just talking to people about what kind of drives them and motivates them. Because, uh, like, I found box, boxing and Muay Thai the same way from like coming in a bad place, but then I saw the the uh, benefits and the you know the resilience and the confidence and all those things that you get from you know what you give you get back in tenfolds I think you know um you know you get way more back than what you give you give it so um so like yeah that's why I was just yeah I was just laughing when you said you know you need a reason to know why you're doing it because yeah, otherwise it's just yeah it makes it a bit of a difficult job so what's our uh, nutrition like for yourself like what's um are you I'm uh, you know I've no doubt that you're pr- you're pretty pretty strict with it but like you know are you is it anything anything special in or is it just a, you love eating a bit of everything or yeah I'm kind of more just like the, that eighty twenty type rule yeah like the majority of my foods are just yeah fresh whole foods like lean meats with some veggies and a uh, carb source. Like I do that for, for most meals. Mm. Um, and then I still allow a little bit of time for having treat type food um, as well. Uh, I've gone through phases of like full restriction and stuff like that. And it yeah. ends up just being binging yeah. and it's not good. Um, when it does come into camp mode for me, when I'm making weight for well to wait there's definitely not much room for the treats <laughs> yeah, yeah the treats <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> really don't like well to wait but um that's again, where the hunger comes from there right there, yeah. I know yeah yeah I step on the scales and yeah. I'm gonna make weight. I want to make weight well because I want to be able to fight well like making weight in a bad way like just it's putting it's like starting a 100 meter race and you're giving yourself making yourself do a 110 meter race you're mm. going to start behind the start line mm. so i've definitely learned that the wrong way or doing mistakes along the way but um yeah just got to be a little bit more careful with the food there mm. um i don't really use anyone too much like i've seen some um dietitians in the past and stuff like that but i i mostly kind of know it myself yeah i was gonna say you know your body yeah past, past experience and yeah monitor and record the weight and make the adjustments from there yeah because that it's alone is uh, to get out of yeah. christmas road right now and stop, yeah yeah. Stop the <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like that's that's just like training in itself isn't it like especially for you for however long you know f- that you've been doing it um that's got to be consistent and that's got to be disciplined in, in such a way as well. Right. Just like anything, uh, you know, like it, it kind of, it kind of is the makeup of everything as well. Right. Your diet, but then it's also like just being on top of it um, on a regular basis and being consistent. You can't let yourself blow out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yes. Like post fight and everything, like you're going to put on a, a few kilos, but people that are like regularly putting on like, 
eight to 12 kilos like yeah. after a fight like it's just no good for your body up and yeah. down up and down yeah. like that yeah um you got to be accountable um mm. afterwards and i think that's um shows your professionalism mm. as an athlete like you still don't need to be in camp mood but you shouldn't mm. be going out and having kfc and pizza every yeah. single day like you like you're retired like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh i'm a fat now. Like, no. <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. um yeah no that's that's i mean that's 100 right like just the the diet aspect is such um i know you get spoken about but i think the discipline of being able to uh, do it week in week out for such a long period I think uh, people don't realize how hard it actually is but again that's where like you said the motivation like what are you doing this for and and all these things like what's getting you up is plays a big factor right in 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 making sure that hey like you know you're you're naturally you're naturally always going to put on weight like you know what I mean like you said a few kilos course, you yeah. know like naturally but yeah not not like not where you kind of blow up and then come back in because yeah, eventually that's going to catch up as well. Right. It's going to catch up to you. And then, yeah. And you also see in the results with some of the people um, and some of the athletes, the level that they're um, able to kind of climb to a lot of it comes off to the back of what you just said. Right. Cause they've been consistent and looking yeah. after themselves all year round. Not <laughs> just, not just when training camp comes around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause even training camp, like the last thing you want to do is, use the majority of the time losing weight, like trying to, you yeah. know what I mean? Cause then you're like, you can't uh, concentrate yeah. on doing the skills. Cause your focus yeah. is you've got to do all these extra. So stressful. Yeah. 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 It becomes so stressful. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it comes with experience as well. I, yeah. I'm definitely not going to toot mm. my horn and say that I haven't made those mistakes. No, no, past, of course. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what security is an athlete. You start realizing all these yeah. things. Yeah. And then that professionalism comes in and, okay, yeah, going to do it the proper way around. Yeah. Um, I guess kind of segue to kind of fish it off, but, like, obviously Aussie boxing in general has kind of really blown up, starting to blow up around here. On right? fire! Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it must be exciting even just for yourself and even just to see the next generation have something that probably – you know, you guys were trying to build at your time, right? And uh, and now it's just like you got uh, you know multiple promotions, but um, you know, obviously we you know kind of no limit leading the way in terms of just you know the 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 theater like the theater aspect of boxing that we love, you know, just the storytelling yeah. and and also just the live shows and etc. But um, that must be pretty exciting for someone like you to 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 see where you started and then to kind of see how it's kind of almost made a comeback but in a, in a special way right now yeah it's so so exciting um to see that and it, i think these shows are such a great platform to just broaden the the audience that mm-hmm. gets exposed to seeing how amazing these sports are and um by doing the the big shows and having little backstories um kind of opens up that audience viewing and gets more people excited um which again just opens up more avenues and opportunities for mm. all those fighters. Mm. Um, even like these footy fight nights, people kind of like rip on the the footy guys and mm. go, oh, why did they get this? Uh, I'm happy for them. Like uh, mm. the majority of them all like uh, dedicate time to the sport and respect it, and they're just giving opportunities for all these other boxers to come on the undercards and mm. to get more viewers and mm. to potentially get more sponsorship from things so i think it's a great thing and i think um, um yeah like that's an interesting one that's an interesting with a footy like um because like i can understand the thinking behind it um i also think that all that all that really shows is it's kind of exposed i guess us as a whole in terms of how we support boxing as well because ultimately we do want the best boxers on and um you know we do want to we do want to see the best fights but also it really comes down to us us being the fans and the audience and saying hey like if we put the if we put the pressure to say we want to see the good fights and 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 support it and and um you know whether you have to be prepared yeah. to buy a ticket to that 100 percent or 100%. to buy the street yeah. service yeah don't yeah. be one of those people that's yeah. like oh who can give me a free streaming link? Who yeah. can? Well, how can we do it unless you actually support yeah, them? Yeah, exactly. So I feel like that 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 only that really 
all it's really done is ex- expose the fact that, hey, we got quality fighters. We got, you know, real boxers and real, you know, guys that have, uh, guys and girls that have dedicated their life and, and have all the potential to, to be something big. But it also, like, that's a big reason why, like, with my platform and with what I'm trying to do is, like, give an identity to these people because a lot of, a lot of the issues was, like, I got mates and I got my brother who's a massive boxing head, and, and I always say this, but a lot of them just don't have that emotional connection to a lot of the athletes till they get, in, like, to that international level. But then by the time they get to that international level, it's like you're almost jumping on their back because they're representing your country. But, Already. But, but you get what I'm saying? But, like, that emotional yeah. connection is not there. Like, whereas you look at, you would know of all people, like, with Europe and, um, you know, with, with the UK, and then you look at America even just with even some of the other sports, let alone even boxing, by the time they come through the amateur ranks and they start to be, they they become pro, the hype train's already on them. They're oh, like, "Yo, this yeah. guy's this guy's a killer," yeah, or this goes, "Yeah, yeah, exactly." All way along, yeah. Rather than wait, see, they've done all this hard work, yeah. and then you just and they get to that point, they're like, "Oh, that. yeah," and they're like, "Oh, who's this?" You know, like who's this person kind of thing, you know. And I think it's not so much even just the fans; it's that that middle ground where it's like, how do we how do we bring I. Uh, how do we start bringing an identity to these athletes so that people can be aware of what they're doing at a local level so that by the time they work themselves to that international level where they're fighting internationally, it's like, whoa, like you, you kind of, you're, you're riding, you're riding on their backs because you, you've kind of seen them come through the ranks. And I think, um, I think that's the level where we need to start getting to where at grassroots to local, um, you know, we start to really see these people, um, you know, kind of put, the, you know, um, do their work in, in the ring and, 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 and fight and, and, and kind of be able to tell their story so that when they get to that level where, you know, they are starting to fight for, you know, kind of world championships or high caliber world fighters, um, it's not like, oh, who is this person kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think a lot well, of that. doing that pretty... a great job, like things yeah. like podcasts or having, yeah. to, having uh, boxers come in and, and doing yeah. some of the interviewing or yeah. the all that kind of stuff and just um, opening up the showing of that person, yeah. and exposing them to more of the audiences. It's really important to be able to yeah. um, build that rapport with the audience. And, and I feel and, like that. And, that will trickle yeah. down, yeah. And I feel like that will trickle down and start building um, financially for fighters as well, because then sponsors and brands and things like that will start to get an idea of, oh, what's going on here, or like, you know, I like her, or I like him, and you know what I mean. And then they they kind yeah. of go from watching from a broad view to like a microscope and saying, hey, is this person worth sponsoring and blah blah blah, and kind of you know, because yeah. like a lot of a lot of like I would say my gripe, but it's like it's like it's like i i don't want i don't want just fight people in general but like fighters and athletes to always kind of look outside of australia to be like oh i gotta look outside of australia to go make it um not just yeah. in terms of just boxing in general like fights but i mean like marketing and branding and 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 things like that like i feel like we have all the tools and we're we're still babies when we come to that aspect of um uh, of what we do you know in terms of like being able to market or brand people and 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 kind of really tell that story um so that people get an idea of who this person really is um i feel like what it's done is it's forced people to be like i need to go to the uk or america or wherever it is and you know and kind of kind of build my reputation there whereas now even with like say no limit and what they're doing they got into they got an international audience tuning in now so um um you know i feel like that's a big thing you know like people are tuning in and watching us like Aussie fights, you know, like main main events, which is something that was probably, you know, quite rare. Pre- yeah, yeah, previously. So um, but back to you. What's what's <laughs> what's kind of what's your what's kind of the, the next couple of years? What's what's kind of brewing in your head? What's the plans? Um well obviously the, the world champs being canned last year's been rescheduled to to this year, um, for May this year. And um, Boxing Australia are going to be doing a qualifying event for both the Commonwealth Games and that World Championship. So it'll get you into both. So yeah. I think it'll be pretty busy. I think in March is going to be the, the nationals for okay. that. Yeah. Um, and then May will be the World Championships. July, August is Commonwealth Games. Yeah. So that's 
pretty busy and I've got a crazy first half of the year coming two fights before that um, tournament even if they're exhibitions I just need something to get me in the ring yeah, yeah. Um, then focus their two two major benchmark events and I, to be honest I think that'll wrap up my career yeah. um, in amateurs I'd love to yeah. go out um, bring a medal home at uh, Commonwealth Games better than I don't want a bronze. I got yeah. bronze last time, so I'll go <laughs> yeah. for a gold. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that'll probably be the end of the, the amateur career and I will look at potentially um, turning pro. Mm. Um, what's kind of, I guess, a segue to end it, what are some of the gems or some advice you can give to, you not even just women, but people in general, just um, something that, I guess you've learned from your journey so far, um, um, whether it's the ups or the downs and, you know, it doesn't always have to be positive, but, um, <laughs> you know, what are, yeah, what, are, um, what are some of the things that I guess you can pass on to, to people that are going to tune in and watch, you know, um, you know, with their lives. Oh, it's something and, super groundbreaking. Yeah. I just don't turn up and do the work. Um, mm. I am not the most naturally skilled boxer at all, um, but, if you just work hard day in and day out, that consistency, that repetition, uh, it'll pay dividends and you will make your way up to the top. Um, just keep that goal in mind, keep working hard, keep learning and honestly, like, you can achieve anything and it's a big part is up here. Mm. you gotta, like you got to know it, believe it, breathe it, feel it and like block out everything else that people say that you can't do this, you can't do that and stay in your own lane. Go get it. I appreciate your time. <laughs> okay. No, that's awesome. That was, that was really well articulated. Um, I really appreciate you giving your time. I really do. Um, and I'm glad uh, we got to, got to make this happen. And uh, I know Sunday's your chillax day, so I won't take too much of your time. Um, no but um, but no, nah, looking forward to uh, you know this first kind of quarter of the year and and, and how you go and um, um, you know I'm sure you know I know I'll be following your journey I'm sure many others will be as well and uh, um, yeah let's you know let's get that gold medal yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right thanks uh, thanks yeah. appreciate it thank you right.